This is the MMA Takes Podcast with your host, Brian Petrie. Usher shit the beginning. What's up with the what's up? Big show here. Got to recap the Vegas trip. I got a lot to say about it. UFC 282. Recap that. Recap the fights. Fun episode. Picks coming later this week. Recorded Anakin Florian today. We did three picks. Great show. Sean Sheen was on. Ray Long was on fire. Kenny and John are amazing. I don't know if that's out at the recording of this. I'm sure it'll be out before this. Whatever. Anyway. We got to talk Vegas. We got to talk picks. So off the top, I went eight, three, and one on my picks, baby. <laughs> Not bad. The one was obviously a push with the uh, Chimaya or Chimaya, what the fuck? Ankalaev and uh, Jan Blachowicz. Uh Eight and three on my picks, though. I missed on Silva. I missed on Bryce, and I missed on Till. Two of the three misses were dogs. Other than that, we had a pretty good night. Uh, two, I, you know, it was the, the, my mortal lock was next live. He lost. So I counted, or excuse me, he draws. So I counted as a loss. Could be a push. Not, not this guy. Okay. I gave, I gave you outright mortal lock winner. The mortal lock demon showed up and gave you a fucking winner. You didn't win. You didn't lose, but you didn't win, but I guarantee the winner. So that's an L. So I went two for three on my locks. Um, my send him home was Salvatore Vincius Salvatore. Uh, however, he got pulled from the fight because uh, Daniel De Silva lost, or excuse me, did not make weight, and then you know got pulled from the fight from health reasons, or whatever. So I pivoted to send him home was Biggie Boy Jersey and a road strike, and then my dog lock was obviously Chris Courtesy cash. Both those cats. We'll talk about the catching in a minute. Okay, we'll talk about the fucking catch in a minute. Two out three out of my locks, uh, and then slime ball hit. So Ankali pushed. Salvatore and Patty were on it. I had to replace Salvatore. I went Santiago Pantanibio. Ooh, got lucky on that one. He was losing, losing a lot of that, lot most of that fight. And then phew, third round, we got it, babe. Patty, mm, Greece decision. We'll get into all that. And then Ankalaev, which I thought he won, had a draw, so we pushed, so we win. Slime ball cashes, final slime ball of the year cashes. That is why I'm wearing the official slime ball parlay t-shirt. Anyway, uh, what, what was my ending tally? Oh, nope, never mind. I keep thinking this is the last fucking, you know, we, you know, last event of the year. It is this weekend, but I will update the slime ball standings at the end of the year. You know, at the end of the year, I recap all my numbers, see how we improve, see how we get better, yada, yada, but let's go Vegas. All right, so let's start with all, the, you know, we'll, we'll get into the trip. Woke up, went to bed at like 7 Thursday night, had a frozen pizza at 5 with the family, had about one or two slices because my little, my oldest, excuse me, my oldest one was hungry. I want her to eat. She doesn't eat a lot. So boom. Right. So I went on an empty stomach, which is okay. Cause I got a little bit of a weak stomach anyway. Didn't want to have to use the bathroom on a plane. I've never used the bathroom on a plane. Number one or number two. And I'm never gonna. Okay. That's a promise for me to you. Never gonna. So get to wake up at three, pick up my buddy, get to the airport, park at the airport. We're, we're there. We're chilling. We're hanging out, drink some water, what have you get on the plane I am the, on the way there, you know, we're economy. So the seats get assigned after you check in, we checked in, we're both middle seats, right? Okay. Whatever. That's going to happen. You know, walk down the plane row 37 on this motherfucking giant plane, buddies to the left. I'm to the right. We're not sitting next to each other. Uh, same row. He walks up these girls who are, who are sitting in the aisle and sitting on the window. She's like, Hey, we know each other. Do you mind if we sit, if I sit in the middle, you can sit in the aisle. He goes, yeah, sure. Cocksucker. I look over my side. The fattest guy on the plane is the window seat. The aisle seat, this guy's about 6'4". I'm the second fattest guy on the plane, and I got to sit next to this guy. So I weasel my way in. He's sitting on my seatbelt. Didn't wear my seatbelt the entire time. Couldn't fit my luggage underneath the seat. I had two carry-ons and a backpack and a little duffel. Couldn't fit underneath the seat because this guy had like a million fucking bags. I mean, he was big. He's a big guy. And I'm like, this is fu- this is a fucking joke. So I put on my headphones. And I just, I just cruise, right? Whatever. Good to go with it. The guy next to me is wheezing. He's coughing. Throwing cough drops in his mouth. He's sleeping. He's fucking arms falling on me. He's twitching as he's sleeping. Guy next to me is getting all mags. I'm kind of moving his way because this guy's fucking leaning on me. He's getting all huffy and puffy. It, it didn't matter. Get me to fucking Vegas. The way there was like a four and a half hour flight. We hit a bunch of wind and all this shit. So it was a long, the longest flight I've ever been on in my life. It was four and a half hours. I've never flown that's the farthest I've ever gone west, never left the country, whatever. I'm a bumpkin. I'm a fucking idiot. So I get to Vegas, cooked, hungry, tired, $60 for an Uber 
from the airport to to, to our uh, hotel, which was ten minutes away. And we had a it, it was chaos. It was chaos. The, the Uber line it was absolutely not something I did not expect. Anyway, you get to the hotel. I had mentioned to them uh, when I when I checked in, we're getting in early. I want an early, uh, or, you know, because we couldn't get until three or whatever the check in time was. I said I'm getting in there early. I want an early check in, and they said no problem, no problem. Hey, Brian, Brian, come to Vegas. We got you. No problem. Get there. Uh, they're like, hey, your room's not ready. But it was a mountainside room. Your room's not ready. Two king size bedrooms not ready. But we do have the poolside view ready right now. But it's thirty extra dollars a night. It's eight thirty, nine o'clock in the morning, right? I'm good to take the thirty dollar upcharge, okay? And then what they don't tell you is you got to put up two hundred or hundred fifty dollar deposit now. All right, fleece me out of all my money, whatever. Charge it to the game. I need to get my room. So, Steve, my buddy Steve, by the way, thank you, Steve, for coming with me. It's a dream come true that we've been talking about 15, 16 years old. Him and I have been friends since second grade. Still one of my closest friends. He loves fights. He loves gambling. Um, he's been to Vegas multiple times. I have been twice before this. We've always wanted to go together. Dreams come true. So, even though it sounds like I'm complaining right now, uh, I'm going to get to all the good stuff and all the bad stuff. This is just kind of the what led up to what happened Friday night. So anyway, we go back to the, we go to the room about nine o'clock. We have an hour before any of the restaurants open in our room, and we're we're exhausted. We want naps. We were hungry, whatever. So we wait an hour. We go down to I'm not going to say the restaurants' names. I'm not going to smirch them. This might not have anything to do with their establishment, right? It, I have a a, a a tricky stomach. Okay, so we go there and we get I get chicken fingers, and then and Steve and I split um chicken fingers like a little five year old because that's what they had on their menu, and uh him and I split loaded nachos, and the food was really good. Hadn't eaten anything. I don't know what the time difference, you know, we're going on, you know, 14, 15, 16 something hours, right? Hadn't eaten anything, just drank a little bit of water. So I scarfed this down. Him and I split the nachos, amazing, chicken fingers, whatever. Go back to the room. We both fall asleep immediately. I wake up about an hour later, covered in sweat, my body burning, my heart rates through the roof because I woke up like I had a nightmare. And my nightmare was that I was sick as a dog, stomach sick. And your boy, typically when he has a stomach bug or stomach whatever, it comes out the backside, okay? Never the front. I don't puke. I don't get nauseous. Uh, my wife's the exact opposite. Every time she eats something that doesn't agree with her, she she hacks it up because she gets nauseous. I'm the other way. I was both. Both, right? And uh, it, I went to the bathroom, and I just it was, it was rough for about maybe five hours. I was just, I mean, yeah. Uh, taking showers the shower is amazing at circa and so friday night was was an absolute drag so that's what the food poison. i didn't tweet out much i believe i tweeted out the food poisoning thing on friday night that kind of wiped out my night didn't really tweet much on saturday or sunday so i wanted to get you guys caught up why i had food poisoning now for vegas itself circa sports and casino resort whatever you want to call it incredible hotel truly truly incredible the concierge the front desk everyone that works there Awesome. Super clean hotel. The beds were amazing. Our room was incredible. Um, it, it, the sports book, it, there, there's not a sports book on the strip that's better than this with the TVs, with the layouts, everything like that. Unbelievable. I think, you know, if I go back to Vegas again, it's going to be at Circa. Circa is an incredible uh, place. I have no problems with Circa whatsoever. Unbelievable hotel. The best shower I've ever had in my life. The shower was incredible um, in a, a great room view of the pool even though they did have the dj going boom, 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 boom all fucking night pumping our room regardless we had a good shot at the tvs so that was incredible saturday went to in and out burger right i was feeling better you know needed to eat hadn't eaten anything all friday night besides some pretzels and some soda and water to kind of settle my stomach went down to the store and got some stuff to help my stomach uh, and then Saturday I was starving, need to eat before the fights went down in and out burger. And I'm a burger guy, believe it or not. I don't know if you can tell. I don't know if you can tell if your boy's a burger guy or not, right? Five guys was my number one. Shake Shack was my number two. My wife loves Shake Shack. That's her number one. I am not a West Coast person. I've never been to California. I've been to Vegas a few times. I've never had in and out burger. And I used to get very frustrated when West Coast guys, California guys, whatever, would say in and out burger is the best burger they've ever had. But this and that, this and that. And I'd say, no, you're wrong, right? Five guys and or Shake Shack's better without even testing in and out Go to in and out Get, you know, and I'm a plain guy. Just get a double-double with cheese. That's it. Nothing else. This fucking thing was incredible. I wanted to hate it. 
I want it to be like, this isn't as good as Five Guys. This isn't nearly as good as Shake Shack. I think it's better than both. I got to have it again. I almost, I mean, I, you know, listen, I could have probably had another one. I didn't because I want to push it at the fights. Unfucking believable It truly was. Now, I know people on the, you know, on the West Coast that eat it all the time. They might come in and go, eh, it's a little overrated. You, know, you might be right. I've only had it once and that one time, and it, and it was the first meal I had that I didn't throw up and that I, I, I kept in my body. So maybe that had something to do with it. Either way, incredible burger. So from there, we go to the fights, right? Now, here's a complaint. I'm going to mix in a complaint. Uber and taxis to get around Vegas, eight minutes, 1.2 miles away, 1.3 miles away is insane. You got to go to a certain area where they park to pick you up. You got to wait in line to get a taxi, get an Uber, whatever it is. It's and it's expensive. It's crazy. 40 bucks to go down the road. A cab takes 25 to get down the road. I don't know if they jacked up the prices because the rodeo was there this weekend. The UFC was there this weekend, whatever it was, you know, they got Sunday football. That's absurd, right? That is crazy, right? The, the, the amount that it was to, to fucking just go places. So anyway, we get to the fights and you know, we're on fl the floor seats, boys. Okay. We got the floor seats. You know what I mean? And uh, they they send us down to this like elevator. We walk through metal detectors. We we're on like it, like we're in like the bowels of the stadium. Looks like what you see on Embedded, right? Like all like you know you're in the stadium. There's UFC employees walking everywhere, camera people walking everywhere. Yeah, sure you take it. We get a coke. We go sit down in our seat. A bunch of patty body fans, English guys with wigs on waiting for us. Go to our seat. Seats are incredible on the floor. I mean, T-Mobile Arena is top of the line, great arena, really clean. The people that work at Team Mobile Marine are very nice. But, you know, we had on the floor seat, there was waitresses walking around. They go get you a drink. Security guys, you know, they're doing their job. They're very nice. You know, the couple of people were getting a little rowdy. They politely told them to sit down. That wouldn't happen to Cincinnati. The security guys at, I think it's called Heritage Bank Arena now, which they need to blow up and then fucking blow up the ashes because it's such a piece of shit. They, they would just kick you out. They don't have that nonsense. Team Mobile Marine and the people were great. Uh, you know, and then we get there and it's just, I took a picture of that. I don't know if I posted it, but I took a picture. Of, that's one of the few pictures I did take. And you're in the arena. We're there early doors open at two. I think we're there at like two 15, two 20 first fights at three 30. And it's just, it's just incredible, right? It's just an incredible feeling to finally live up to a lifelong dream of being in Vegas, not even floor seats were my dream. I didn't think I could afford that, but we're in floor seats. Me and Steve were geeking out. It was amazing. Refs walk by a fist bump, Jason Herzog. That's my guy. Um, and it was, it was fucking cool. So then we get some people start filling up and the guys in front of us, these two Cali kids, right? Diehard fans. The one Cali kid, he's from LA. The other one's from the Bay Area. They're best friends. They went to college, right? Hardcore UFC fans. They know their shit. I was eavesdropping. We were talking throughout the night. Good guys. They were drunk. They came in hammered city and it was great. They were feeling it. They were there from the first fight to the last fight. Uh, the one guy I believe had to have made this big E boy Rosenstruck shirt himself. Um, but they were really cool guys and they, and they knew their stuff. They were, they were passionate. They were drunk, but they knew their stuff. Um, and it was funny. We're sitting there and then Heidi Dean comes over, right? And Heidi Dean, we hug up, we take a picture, we talk a little bit, the absolute best. I want Heidi Dean to run for president. I would vote for her. She is the best, sweetest lady. She's working, asking me if I need anything. You're working. I don't want to bother you. I just wanted to, you know, I've met her before. I want to see you again. And it, it was just so fucking cool seeing her. She came over. And she's UC, UFC'd up, UFC Landered, you know, whatever. And people are kind of looking at me like, okay, well, how's this guy know this UFC lady, right? What, what, what's going on here, right? So we talk. She walks away because uh, I texted her. I texted Jason Anik was in town. I texted John, right? Now, John comes out. I see him. It's like 3.15-ish, like 15 minutes before the first fight. So I don't, I don't want to bother him. The guys in front of me are like, dude, we got to get a picture with Anik. Anik's the man. I love Anik. And they're running up to the guardrail, taking pictures of John behind, like, the guardrail, right? He's, like, doing his thing. And he in the middle, he was doing that, like, dance that they put out, whatever, right? He was doing that. Um, and they're like, dude, Anik's the man. They're coming back. And we had some English guys behind us who were, like, super cool, too. And they're like, let's go picture with Anik. And they go get a picture with Anik. And my buddy's like, well, go say something to him because he didn't respond back to my text. Didn't want to bother him while he was working, right? In Columbus, he came and found me. But this was running a little late. You know, maybe he got laid out. You know, they're about to start. So I was like, I don't want to bother him. It's okay. But then I'm like, you know what? This guy's done so much for me. I need to bro hug him. Because we hugged in when March. I had just started doing the podcast. So we have been doing it since March. So we have been doing it now nine months of knowing each other, texting, whatnot. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go. I'm going to go say something to him. I have to, right? So he he's like walking, you know, talking to somebody. And I go up to the guardrail. And I was like, Anik. And he sees me. We hug. 
talk a little bit, chop it up. You know, my mom's got some stuff going on, so they commented at me for the podcast. We did it today as opposed to doing it Sunday or Monday, which was, you know, completely generous. And we're talking, having a good time. John goes and does work. I turn around, and there's like 15 people taking our photos. And I'm just like, I, I, of course, I feel like a fucking stud, man. Of course, I feel cool as shit. You know what I mean? So I go and sit back down. Steve, Steve, him and Steve met as well. And uh, we sit back down. I was like, that's so cool. That's dope or whatever. And then these guys that were two rows in front of me, they were like a group of them. The guy comes up and he goes, hey, excuse me. Um, How do you know John Anik? I was like, oh, yeah, I'm on his. You know, I didn't want to be like, come on. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> I'm on his podcast. Big Gum Ryan Beatry. I give out picks. You know, I didn't want to, you know. I just said, oh, yeah, I'm on his podcast. He goes, and he looked confused. And he goes, okay, yeah, cool. I, I'm whatever. And I was like, yeah, I'm Brian. We shook hands. And he, and he goes back to his friends. And I saw him go back to his friends, and as he goes, he goes, the one friend was like, ah, who is that guy? How does he know him? And uh, and uh, and um the guy was like, Oh, he like produces his podcast or something. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, so I start laughing, like, yeah, yeah. So the two guys in front of me, they don't say anything, they're pretty drunk, but I'm not gonna lie, like they were such hardcore fans, they were referencing MMA Twitter a little bit, like people saying like pre-lame gang and all this stuff, and they were huge fans of Anik, and I'm like. A little ego hurt, like, because now I'm a celebrity all of a sudden, apparently, in my head, right? I'm a little ego hurt that these two guys in front of me don't know who I am. I'm like, wait, come on, guys. You're, you know, come on, right? You're a big fan of Anna, you know, you're fucking, come on, man. And uh, and then right before the first fight starts, or like right when the bell rings or whatever, people are still looking at me trying to figure out who the fuck I am. And then Jay, Jason Anna gets to his, uh, Jason Anna gets to his seats or whatever. He's sitting cage side. He's helping John out. Uh, and he's got like just dope, dope cage side seats. And he comes over and uh, and we bro hug up in the aisles and just chatted up for a couple minutes. And just again, just crazy nice guy. Love his energy. Love his positive. It's just a nice, nice dude. And someone like I want to like hang out with him and John. I want to like fucking hang out with. Right. I'm just going to go ahead and say that I'm going to be one of those guys. Cool fucking dude. You know, he was there. He met Bilal for the first time the night before. Obviously, I do a great show. Remember the show. I've been on it a few times. And it was just, it was just awesome, right? You know, and then I come back down and people are, you know, John and Jason look identical. My grandmother's a twin. And I've always been able to tell my identical twins. And I've always been able to tell them apart. I don't think they look anything alike, but everyone has a hard time telling them apart. And then I can do it. But with Jason and John, obviously you can tell them apart because of the hair, but they're really identical. It's crazy. They feel like I hugged them up. They feel the same. They look exactly the same. It's just the hair that's different. And then Jay kept popping over. Uh, throughout the night when he would go piss or get a drink or whatever and we would talk and stuff like that it was just incredible and then kid cannon kid ron canyon uh kid cannon tv on on instagram he does a lot of the videography stuff for the ufc he follows me on instagram he's a really him and uh um bryce mitchell are very close uh yeah videographer for for the ufc um go ahead, give him a shout follow he has way more followers than me on twitter so i don't know why i'm telling you to follow him he's a really talented guy kid cannon tv uh he's been working the ufc for a while he came over he started following he messaged me on uh on Instagram while ago saying he likes my stuff, which I was blown away. I love his stuff. And he came over, shook my hand as well. And now, so this is another person. So now I got a guy, Jason, there coming over. I got Heidi Dean. I met John, another UFC employee coming over, shaking my hand. We we're talking for a little bit. Great guy. Now everyone in this section around me, because now we're like the ground seats, everyone's like pretty much there. And everyone's like, who the fuck is this guy? Right? I'm confused. No one knows who I am. And then Nathan Phillips, MMA, shout out Nathan Phillips, MMA on, on Twitter, good Twitter follower. He did the Anik show either a week before or after me. I can't really remember. He's a capper himself. Uh, he reached out to me in the DMs like, hey, I'm right, like, right behind you. So we met, we shook hands, talked a little bit, took a picture. So people were even more confused. Like, who the fuck is this fat face fuck taking pictures with? So when I got up, the English guys behind me and the guys, in, uh, or the guys to the right of my asked my buddy, like, who is that guy? My buddy tells him, and the English guy's like, oh, my God, I know that. I knew it was Big Gun. So I sit down, he comes up, and goes, are you Big Gun, Brian Patriot? That's my English accent, by the way. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I knew it. You know, it. You know? Uh, great. The English guys were great. And it was so funny because it was such a, it was such an, um, an American experience versus, like, an English experience. So the guys in front of us came in hot, drunk, rowdy. The English guys came in very calm and they were back there going, he probably won that round, right? Very civilized, but they're boozing, like they're drinking, right? So at the end of the night, the English guys are toasty, right? They're ready. They're they're done. And they, <laughs> or they're maybe starting their night, but they're toasty. And the guys in front of us, the American guys, they're fucking checked out. They're sitting there watching the fights like, oh, <laughs> they're so tired because they hit that wall. I am your typical American. When I used to drink, I was like the guys in front of us. 
I would fucking booze early and I would never finish the race. Now, these guys finished the race. I say it till the final fight, no, no doubt about it. But the English guys behind us, the one guy kept leaning up and he just kept repeating himself. He, I think he forgot what he was saying. He was like, oh, I'm too drunk. Like, great fucking guys. Um, really knowledgeable. Everyone in the section was knowledgeable. It was, it was a really cool experience sitting with fans that that knew what the fuck they were talking about, right? And uh, the only little incident, I guess, that happened that I didn't like was so I go and take a piss. The only piss I took the all night. I go and take a piss, and there's this guy in front of me. And so we're lined up in the piss, and two people in front of me are or my English buddy, the guy who sat behind us who, who recognized me or recognized me after my buddy told him. And then there was this fucking guy who's in, like, white uh, linen pants, Italian loaves, like a Michael Strahan-looking fucking jacket, right? He thought he looked all fucking cool. He's there with a hot chick. He starts giving my English buddy a trouble about how he doesn't know who the, who the Indy 500 is starting or whatever the fuck. How do you not know the Indy 500? And my English buddy's like, he's drunk as, as a skunk. He goes, that doesn't mean anything to me. What, 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 what do you want me to say? The guy's like, well, there's an English guy that does the Indy 500. Why don't you know? You should know. And I think I think he was obviously drunk, too. And the English guy's just like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, what are we talking about? So I was just like, hey, listen, we're at the fights, okay? Let's care about UFC 282. Let's not talk about fucking Indy 500. You can do that on your own time. Leave my guy alone. And this dude looked at me, and I just was like, you know, I'm towering over him. You know, just fuck. <laughs> not really. Uh, but it's like, don't pick on my English buddy. What are you doing, Mr. Hotshot? Uh, but other than that, UFC 282 was incredible. Uh, Sunday, woke up, slept in, bangles, and then we kind of just chilled out, hung out, and then we had a late flight Sunday night. So getting to meet John, getting to meet Jason, getting to meet Hanny, uh, hi, Hanny, Heidi again, uh, Key Canyon TV, just just the people that I've experienced, like talked to or whatever, have a relationship, I guess, via online. And seeing him in person is just is just incredible, you know. And, and UFC 282 delivered on all aspects. One of the greatest moments of my life. Check that off the bucket list for sure. Um, that is something I've been looking forward to for I mean forever, um, and it was incredible, right? So that hats off to Vegas, half off to T-Mobile. If you have the means, and if this is ever something you've ever wanted to do, I highly suggest you go to a a, a Vegas UFC because it is it was is entirely worth it. It is uh, incredible. In Fucking credible. Now, with all that being said, I got some bones to pick with Vegas. Number one, well, not number one. Number two, which I've been talking about the entire time, your Ubers and your taxis are way too expensive. The next time I go, I'm renting a car. It's going to pay for itself. It's just entirely too expensive. I didn't get to see much because I didn't want to spend 60 bucks on a fucking Uber to go down the street. Um, we kind of chilled at Circa, which is why we stayed at Circa's because they have a lot of things. And it's amazing. I'll stay there again. Whatever. UFC is amazing. And then here's the real rub. Here is where I get very upset. So you guys know I was going all in on Chris Curtis. 10 unit. 10 unit play. And I had the slime ball. I was getting a bet on every fight. You heard me say that. So I knew going in that you couldn't use Fandles, uh, Barstool, DraftKings in Nevada. I knew that. You had to use BetMGM, Caesars. William Hill, Circa has an app, right? We're staying at Circa, so I'm going to use Circa. So I download the app, and they're like, oh, you got to come register with us. So I go to the sportsbook Friday night. I got to fill out paperwork, right? Fill out paperwork. You get a T-shirt, all that shit, and then uh, fill out paperwork, and um, they only take cash deposit. So I only had like 100 bucks for me because I wasn't planning on playing table games, so I had $100 cash. So I gave them the hundred dollars cash or actually I gave him 50 and then I put 50 on Rafi on stocks. Cause they only took cash plays. Okay, good. You're signed up. You're in right. And the guy goes, listen, here's a little trick about using our app. It doesn't work on Wi-Fi. You have to go to your cell phone settings. Okay. So I sit down right in front of the fucking sports book. I'm, I'm 10 feet away from where you place bets. And I get on this app and I'm trying to place another bet for Bellator. Right. And it doesn't work. It won't work. I'm off Wi-Fi. I'm doing whatever. And I go up to the guy and say, hey, this isn't working. He goes, oh, yeah, sometimes that happens. You might need to step outside. Step outside to use your app? What the fuck is going on? I was like, you know what? I'll just, I'll save that 50 for the UFC tomorrow, and I'll put more on my card. Like, I'll have my, you know, transfer money over like you do, DraftKings, whatever, via debit card, whatever the fuck. Okay, cool. Place my 50 bets on stops. He wins a decision. Very close, grimy fight. Sabatello thought he won. Doug Crosby gave him a 50-45, which is egregious, first and foremost. That was a very close fight. I thought Stotts won because, he, you know, Danny Sabatello was a wrestling match. He didn't throw any punches. He just wrestled. They had nice exchanges. Stotts did the more damage, what have you. 
I thought Stotts won. Right, forgot one. Cash my ticket. About it being first win in the night. Right. So after that, that was still like a long day with the throwing up and stuff. Go back to the room. Um, wake up Saturday. Right again, In and Out, whatever. Go to In and Out, and I had or I go to In and Out and I use the Circa app and I have fifty dollars in my account. So I place a fifty dollar wager. Um, in you know we're we're far away from Circa at this point. We're on the Strip. Right. We're right by. Not right by. We're like close to T-Mobile and MGM and all this stuff. So I, I place I place the fifty dollar wager on the the slime ball parlay. Right, that's what I was like. You know what? I'm gonna get the parlay in because then I'm gonna go upload money and do more. I want to get the parlay in because I knew I was put more on Chris. So I get the parlay in right, and I had to obviously switch it up. Santiago, uh, Pontanibio, uh, Ankle Life, and Patty got that in. Boom, whatever. Plus money. Forget what it was. Doesn't matter. So then I'm so then I, we we drive over to T-Mobile Arena and I'm on my phone. And I'm trying to upload money to the Circa app. And it says I got to go to the casino and I got to give them cash or fill out more paperwork. I said, I already did that. Why can't I just upload from my debit card? Like you can do on any other website, you know, any other app here or Indiana or wherever. Fuck's going on. So we get out of T-Mobile and I just jet over to MGM, I believe. Was, yeah, MGM was close. Jet over to MGM, hit the ATM, take the money out and throw it on Chris because I'm like, I can't get this app to work. So while I was at Bet MGM, I download their app. Like, fuck it. I'm just going to use MGM's app. Same thing. You got to go check in and fill up a bunch of paperwork. I'm not doing that. I'm not having all these casinos have my fucking social security number. Like, what the fuck? So I place the cash app, get the ticket, boom, right? The, the, the cash ticket, whatever. I have to bet Chris, right? Got the slime ball on for 50 bucks, have to bet Chris. And I'm sitting at MGM wanting to maybe look over the card and place more bets, props, whatever. There's not many options. And then we had to go to the arena, right? We had to go back to the arena. So it was all rushed. and It was just normal. So terrible. So I'm sitting at fucking the arena and, and I'm looking up apps to download. I downloaded Caesars. I downloaded William Hill. I downloaded uh, another one that works in Nevada. All the same thing. I took pictures of my ID, front and back, whatever. And then after you complete all that, go to William Hill uh, Sportsbook and finish the process. Cash deposits. Cash does. Why? When did Nevada turn into a dinosaur? Why couldn't I sit at the fights, just free betting fights? I didn't know I had to put money into Circa in person for it to work on the app. And the app is designed by a five-year-old. It's a terrible looking app. It was so disheartening because all I've wanted to do in Vegas, I went to Vegas not to play roulette, not to play craps, definitely not to play those fucking slot machines. It was to see fights and gamble live because, like, when TJ, I picked Eric Silva, but when TJ Brown came out, I'm like, TJ Brown's winning. I had a gut feeling. After that first right hand, I'm like, oh, TJ Brown's winning this fight. That's something that I could have fucking felt in my gut and placed that bet, but I couldn't because Nevada's got all these crazy fucking dinosaur rules. It's crazy. You know what I mean? And that really, really stung. I really was like, what the fuck is going on? And my buddy was the same way. And it's just like, I'm glad I got the Chris bet in and I'm glad I got the slime ball on. But that was my only two bets besides stocks Friday night. Won them all and I'm up. So I'm happy. Didn't piss it away on the tables or all the other bets. So I'm up. But it was hard and impossible and frustrating. You know, we're and I will take some blame. I should have done some research before that. Maybe I should have registered before whatever the fuck, however you do. I should have done that right when I got there on Friday. There's a lot of arguments made. It could be on my side. But all I know is, when sports betting comes to Ohio, January 1st, my FanDuel and my DraftKings and whatever I fucking use will work for my couch and I don't have to register for anything. The Hard Rock Cincinnati is getting a sports book, 137 TVs, fucking food, everything looks great. January 1st, that opens. I go down there. I can use the Hard Rock app or I could sit there and place bets via whatever fucking service I want. Vegas, I realize they probably don't want to make a cut with you know, because if you if they are in business with DraftKings and Fandles and the Barstools, they got to give that book a cut. I get that. They're dinosaurs, they don't want to do that. They made it impossible. So I'm just so glad I got my Chris bet in because I talked about it. I, I almost did it. I almost was at T Mobile Arena. I didn't want to have to go because it wasn't working, but I said, I got it. I have to. I have to. This is why I'm here. So I said on the pick em podcast, I was betting every fight, and I wish I did because I went eight, three, and one. But I didn't bet in fight, and I would have went eight or nine, two and one because I had a really good feeling when TJ Brown walked out that he was going to win that fight. It was so my sports betting career, and it's not really a career because I'm not a professional, but my sports betting fandom loved them, whatever, loved them, loving whatever came from Vegas when I was there 10 years ago. 
And now sports betting is so prevalent and it's, and I'm so used to one thing. I thought you could do it in Vegas, the Mecca of sports betting, right? And they are still so old school with the way they do it that it's like, I should be able to sign up to bet MGM right when I hit Nevada, deposit money, just like I can do when I'm in Indiana and be good to go. And that just wasn't the way it was. And it bummed me the fuck out. So I got the Chris bet in and I got my slime ball in stops the night before we're happy, but I had to fucking complain about that. And my boy Christian warned me about that. He says, Vegas is expensive and I'd rather just sit on my couch. I said, what are you talking about? Dude, it's Vegas, right? And I love Vegas. Vegas is a lot of fun, but the sports betting side of it, like why would I want to bring just truckloads of cash walking around with cash on me all the time, carrying them loads of cash, going up to a person to fill out these complicated bets when I like staring at my phone, viewing the odds, and then no line behind me when I'm on my phone. You know what I mean? No person getting impatient in front of me, making me rush. It's It, it, it was a nice kick in the teeth. I did not realize that was going to happen, so that's the biggest letdown to me. That was very, very unfortunate. I'm glad I got my bets in. I won some cash. I'm up on the night. Everything's good, but man, January 1st, Ohio sports betting comes and I can't be more excited. That's my Christmas gift. My Christmas gift was Vegas. My wife's like, what do you want? Nothing, right? I want January 1st to come. You know what I mean? Um, and it sucks because not in the UFC until like two weeks later. We are like, we got like a month off and I only bet UFC, but I'm probably going to have to bet football or something to, to get that itch because, I mean, I have to. You know what I mean? So that is my biggest complaint about Vegas. Other than that, UFC 282, T-Mobile Arena was amazing. We'll go over the fights real quick. I didn't want to stay long. Wanted to get my rants out there. Um, first fight of the night, uh, Cameron S Simon versus Steven Kozlow. Simon, again, looking a, a little out-muscled. He's a young kid. Kozlow took him down at will, was uh, without grappling him on the ground for the most part. Simon was re reversing him. Uh, when he did, it was a competitive fight, but I thought he might have been losing. It could have been 1-1 one, one going to the third. He sealed the deal in the third. Kozlow had never gotten in the first round before. Simon, just like he did on the uh, Contender Series, fucking... Um, uh, goes ahead and steals the show in the third round, uh, closes the show in the third round. This girl that sat next to me was rolling on something, Molly, ecstasy, whatever. She would randomly scream sometimes. And, you know, I say send him home, right? Get him out of there, send him home. She was yelling, wrap it up, wrap it up. <laughs> I'm going to have to steal that from her. Uh, she also smelled like diarrhea. I think she shit her pants at some point. Um, whenever she stood up, it smelled like diarrhea. It's like, oh, just sit the fuck down. Um, Eric Silver's TJ Brown. I, I picked Silva as a pick and fight. TJ Brown looked good. He looked big. He looked strong. Silva wasn't winning a second of this fight. Um, the grappling I thought was going to favor Silva. It was not. TJ Brown looked strong on the ground. Uh, and, uh, you know, close the show at the end of that third round, which is good. Billy Q versus Alex Hernandez. Great fight. Billy Q's a fucking stud. This guy doesn't quit. He got cut up. Hernandez is, is, is strong in that first round, right? You know, he's cut to 145. I figured the gas tank was going to be an issue. It was at 55. You're going to go ahead and cut 10 pounds. Probably going to be an issue. Billy Q, no issue. Tough as nails. Getting cut up. Makes it ugly. And, you know, wins the fight, breaks you down slowly and then fucking takes you out. And uh, that's exactly what Billy Q did. The guys in front of me at Billy Q on a heavy parlay. So I'm glad those guys won. Chris Curtis. Got to talk about my guy, Chris Curtis. Um, so goddamn impressed with him. We texted. He invited me to the team dinner on Friday night. I was bummed out I couldn't go. He texted me. Um, you know, we were talking about because Buckley got in his face at the weigh-ins. And he's like, what the fuck was that about? Right. And we, we were talking about that. And just, just overall, like, just stuff like, you know, just life stuff or whatever via the text. And, you know, I was incredibly proud of him. I always knew he could do it. I feel like he got snubbed for many years, whatever. Goes in the Buckley fight. And the one thing that surprised me in the cage, and again, I was pretty close. Um, Chris looked bigger than Buckley. And I know Buckley's a small 85er, but so is Chris. But Chris looked thicker and bigger than Buckley, which is very surprising to me. But Buckley had a lot of speed early on. A lot of those stuff he was throwing, I rewatched it back um, when I got back to my hotel room. <clears throat> um Buckley uh, was throwing a lot, right? And he was very active and in, in throwing a lot of punches more than I thought. I mean, he was on pace to throw like 300 punches or something like that was what the commentator said. And uh, a lot of them weren't landing though, right? Then Chris smoked them in the first round, like the first minute with a left hand. I mean, smoked them on the chin. He walked right into it. And when he took that, I saw it live. And then I even obviously saw it on when I watched it back, how good it was. I'm like, oh, fuck, he took that. Maybe his chin isn't as bad as I thought because Chris smoked him quick. And uh, again, Buckley was just getting off first. Chris was stalking. Chris's defense is great. 
And I just don't think a lot of those shots land. I mean, Chris got a couple shots, obviously. Uh, Buckley hit him with a couple, and, and Chris just shook his head and was kept marching forward. Nothing really, you know, kept him back. And um, But I, Chris probably lost that first round. I think we were down the first round, and we were down halfway through the second. I think Chris was he, – he's a little bit of a slow starter at times. At least can be. Sometimes he starts fast, but he can be. And he's getting his reads and figuring it out. And then, you know, the second round, Buckley was even more active, but he was slowing down just a hair. And I think Chris said it best in his post fight. He's like, this guy has speed. I'm 35. I got to beat him with timing. And right when you slow down because of the output, you throw a lazy kick, you get it caught. And Chris just threw that left, bang, slapped him, knocked him out twice, followed up on the ground, knocked him out, woke him up, knocked him out again. Um, and it was just amazing. I screamed. I lost my voice a little bit. I was hoarse all more. I was hoarse all Sunday, all morning today. Um, it's starting to come back a little bit. Uh, I screamed like a primal fucking, rah, I don't even know what I did. The guys in front of me, I told the guys behind me as I was standing up the whole time. I'm like, listen, this is my guy here, okay? I used to train with him. I love him. He's my brother. I'm going to be standing up nervous. And the English, no, oh, we're standing with you. And the guys in front of me are like, yeah, we're with you too with Chris. They didn't pet Chris, but we're with you too. And we all just lost it when he knocked him out. It was just a good camaraderie, which I'll never forget. And, uh, man, yeah, Chris is just amazing. Text him out to the fight. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, what else can you say? You got a guy who you've been with forever a decade, and uh, you want all the good things from him. You want all the best things from him. And he goes out there, and he's 4-1 and one in the UFC with three finishes of, out of his wins. The one loss is to a high-ranked guy in Jack Manson on short notice which wasn't his best performance, which, you know, anybody can tell you. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's unbelievable. You know what I mean? I, I'm just so happy for the guy, and he deserves it. He's talented. It sucks that he got here late, but he's going to end his career in the UFC, no doubt about it. He's made $150,000 so far in a short time in the UFC on, on uh, performance of the night bonuses. So, um, and he's only getting better, right? His takedown offense was always an issue a little bit. That cleaned up. He hasn't given up a takedown in the UFC yet. I don't think he will. He's going to be prepared when he goes against these wrestlers. At 85, even though being undersized, he does have the speed advantage on most of the bigger guys. Buckley, obviously, he had the speed advantage. Um, he called out Duplessis on a podcast after the fight, which I love that fight for him. Um, but just blown away. One And the money thing, it doesn't even matter. I placed a lot of money on him. That, that, that doesn't mean anything. Obviously, it means something to me, but I don't want to make this about me. It's about Chris and his performance and how amazing he was and and, and guys, listen, I mean, I know I'm biased. I know I know the guy. I know I love the guy. But this is a guy you want to root for. Trust me. He's a good, good human. He's got a great story. And, uh, and this is a guy you want to root for. I know the Hermanson thing. A lot of people may be turned on him because of how he acted. That was very uncharacteristic of him. I know he did in the Bilal fight or whatever like that. People brought that up on Twitter when I was defending him. This is emotional sport, right? We're, we're, we're not playing fucking pancakes here, right? Right when Bilal won that fight, he went to the UFC. Chris wins that fight, he's in the UFC. This is a guy who's been snubbed a lot and takes his career very seriously and trains his ass off and uh, gets frustrated just like every other fucking human being, right? And then he made amends with Jack. Him and Bilal are good friends now, or at least friendly on Twitter. I know they've met in person or whatever. There's no beef. There's no bad blood. Um, and, and Chris is a first-class human. And, and, I, and I implore you, that even if you don't like him, give him a second shot because this is a guy to fucking root for. He's incredible. Love him to death. Uh, he gave me a shout out. Brendan Schaub gave me a shout out, which is crazy about Chris Curtis. Um, and then uh, Chris retweeted that and said that him and I are brothers, which you know we've been a brother for ten years. And it's true. You know we started the gym. Uh, Chris Smith, RIP, who I got on my wall here, Slaughterhouse. I met him first. He was a heavyweight. Uh, I probably told the story before real quick. He was a heavyweight, 10 and 0 heavyweight, just came in off a head kick knockout. Dom Steele was a, an amateur at this point as well. Him and Chris Smith both were about to turn pro. And then Chris Curtis was a pro, his fourth fight as a pro. Um, and they were like, those three were stick as thieves. And I met Chris Smith first. We sparred, we hit it off. He introduced me to Chris, uh, Chris Curtis and Dom, and we all kind of hit it off. But Dom, Chris Curtis, and uh, and Chris Smith were traveling partners. They went they went everywhere together. They support each other. They cornered each other, and uh, and and they let me in that brotherhood just just enough. And then, <clears throat> and then Chris and Dom, their lives got busy. And then Chris Curtis and I. Chris lived in the gym, and then the, at this point in in the time of my life, I was at the gym heavy. So Chris and I worked every single day. And then I remember getting a fight sign. I was gonna fight in Indianapolis in, in, in October. And uh, Chris calls me up. and was like, "Oh my god, like hey, this is amazing. Like, we, we, who's driving? Who's doing this? I didn't have to ask him to corner me." He didn't even know what day it was. He didn't even know what time it was. He didn't. He was in, out of town. 
he didn't care about any of that. He knew he was coming with me and cornering me, which made me feel so good. Fight didn't happen. Fight dropped out. Guy pulled out. And then a, another fight got rebooked. It, it fell apart. No, I have, you know, either way. But that's just the kind of human he is. And, uh, yeah, uh, I love the guy that did that. All right, Edmund Shabazian versus Dolce Lugumbula. Shabazian, I thought, looked good here. He looked patient. Cardio, not a problem. He looked big, right? I was, I mean, Dolce is ripped up. And Edmund's a thick kid as well for 85. He looked good. Um, obviously he's young. I think he get maybe got a got a little jump, a uh, hype train a little too early. Now he's you know left Glendale. Now he's in uh, Las Vegas training, and he, and he looked good against Dolce. Very patient performance. Um, good for Edmund there. Raul Rosas Jr. Young kid. Bad look for Jay Perrin. All that shit talk. He was he was classy in the feet, but all that shit talk. Per, uh, Rosa Jr. went out there and finished him. This kid's very cocky. This kid's very confident. Calling out Aljo, saying he can beat Aljo. Oh, about that right now, kid. Biggie Boy versus Dawkins. Hate seeing Dawkins get knocked out again, but this is the Biggie Boy we wanted. We wanted the aggressive Biggie Boy who, if he does this in all of his fights, I don't know how he loses that many because he hits so goddamn hard, he just doesn't let it go. He needs to let it go. Let it go against Dawkins. Didn't let Dawkins get any of his grappling going. And, uh, you know, Biggie Boy got a knockout there. Bryce Mitchell gets dog walked by Alayla Tapora. I was dead wrong on this one. I thought Bryce Mitchell was going to be a little bit stronger and on the takedowns. You know, you watch uh, Mark Madsen, Marco Madsen, who's a Greco Roman guy, just get taken down repeatedly by a Greco Roman, Greco Roman fucking silver medalist. And he got taken down repeatedly by Grant Dawson. I thought, you know, because Greco Roman's upper body. And that is a Toporia thing. He's an upper body Greco Roman style. And I thought maybe the legs were going to be available for Bryce. They were not. That first single attempt, Toporia shrugged him off. Power in his hands. He's compact. He's strong. He's good everywhere. He moves well on the ground. He's fast. And, uh, you know, I know Bryce apparently was sick or whatever. It doesn't matter. Bryce could have been 110%. Toporia wins. Bad read on my part for sure. Um, I just, you know, it's not like I don't, it's not like I dislike Toporia. I have picked him before. He was a slight dog against Damon Jackson. I hit that underdog. I just thought this was a bad matchup for him. I, I didn't know what Toporia necessarily had, and he's fucking proved it to me. So I had to take that on the chin. Thankfully, it was just a pick because that was a fight I was going to bet. Another fight I was going to bet, Darren Tilvers, just to do Plessis. There was a knee injury. Did it happen before? Did it happen with the knee bar? What happens in the knee injury? Darren Till almost got 10-8 in the first round. Don't know what he was doing. Comes back the second round and, and pieces. Uh, Justin Duplessis up third round, looking good. Duplessis getting easy takedowns. I mean, easiest you've ever seen him. And then Till fought off a really good submission. Uh, attempt and then Duplessis just got him in the face crank. He tapped out quick. He, qu he tapped out quick. He quit. Um, and then Darren kind of, and I'm a till guy, so this is tough, but Darren comes out, does a video where he's not retiring, wants the time off, but he wants to fight next year. It's very mixed signals to me. Uh, it didn't seem like he knew what he was saying. He felt like he had to come out and release a statement. Almost seemed like it was like a relief that he kind of went in, it went in there and, and, and lost and it, it's over. Like, I don't know where his mental's at, but it's not in a good place. Um, the UFC is not going to cut him because he's a huge star. He missed that big time cut, not coming out to Miss uh, Sweet Caroline. He came out to some some song I didn't even know. Did not fire me up. Uh, Sweet Caroline would have fucking blown the roof off. But um, as a till guy, that hurts. You know, I tweeted out what happened to him. A lot of people responded. He's never been that good. That's what happened to him. So I I do agree that he got rushed at 170. But I do think he's that good. I think he's proven he's that good. Even if he was overrated, he's not what we saw Saturday, right? He's not that bad. That was a winnable fight for him. Justice Duplessis is a very tough guy, not the best technical guy in the world. Tough guy. Has okay skills everywhere. Darren should have won that fight. I don't know why he didn't. Knee injury could have been short, but it, it's it's up here. It's up here in my opinion. Um, but I still love the guy. You know, wish him the best, uh, whatever he does. Take some time off, whatever you got to do. Santiago Ponsonini was Alex Morono. Won a great fight. Morono is a guy I always fucking doubt. And I had a tweet ready to go, ready to fire off if he lost. Santiago Ponsonini would have. That newsflash, Brian, quit fucking fading Morono. You're done doing it. Because he looked good. And he was dropped Santiago twice or three times, kicking his leg up. Santiago was kicking his leg up. Morono's getting off the center line. He's, he, his punches are kind of awkward. They got a little bit more sting to him than you think. Super fucking impressive. And then Santiago, just one right hand. The guy's got heart for days. He's not quitting. He's bloody. Been hurt. Third round. He's tired, right? You got a guy in there that you weren't, you weren't preparing to fight. And you land a right hand. And Morono eyes just go. And then, you know, Ponsonia was a killer. And then the finish in the fight. That's the first leg of the parlay. Dad's end up, you know, 
obviously seeing the parlay for me because in the next two I had a parlay as well. So the next two are very controversial. Everyone's got opinion on both these. So we'll take a little time to talk about them. So Patty versus Jared Gordon. All right. I'm a Patty guy. I like Patty. He's not one of my guys, but I like him because he's good for the sport because of the popularity and, and the eyeballs he brings, right? So Patty, um, I thought was going to dominate this fight. I was wrong. I thought he was going to catch Gordon early. I know Patty's not the biggest striker in the world, um, but he does have power. I thought he was going to catch Gordon with something, a kick, a punch, whatever, because Gordon has been knocked out before. And I thought the wrestling was going to cancel out. So first round, Jared Gordon lands about 14 left hooks. Patty can't defend it. His whole right side of his face is messed up. Um, can't stop it. He's firing back. He's not getting like dropped or hurt with the, I mean, he might've been getting hurt when they're not like rocked or anything, but he was taking some big shots. First round was a clear, clear Jared Gordon round. Landing big shots, causing damage. Looked stronger in the clinch. I believe he ended the round with maybe a takedown. Could have been the second round. I had not rewatched this. So I got to rewatch it. Second round, Patty came out a little more active, throwing more shots. Jared Gordon was backing up in the cage. He was covering up well, not letting a lot of his shots go through, but they were still going. Patty was throwing some kicks, some 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 uh, punches, defending some takedowns, and then I believe he maybe gave up a takedown at the end of that round. I could be could be un, uh, not sure about that. I know he had he had this weird kind of like weird arm triangle, rear naked choke attempt, which I didn't give him a submission attempt. I believe that was in the second round. Uh, either way, close round for sure. So Jared Gordon won the first round. I gave Patty the second. I thought he was more active on the feet. I thought he landed the bigger shots. Um, Jared Gordon landed, made me land at more shots. I thought Patty landed the bigger shots, and the stats backed that up. I believe Jared had more total strikes. Patty had more significant strikes. Second round, Patty. Now, the third round, I think, is the hardest round to score because you got Jared Gordon with um, pressure and, and, and control time on the cage, not really landing too many takedowns but he's landing no strikes, right? I really wish Jarrett would have came out that third round and he seemed like the fresher guy and he seemed like he can tr- control Patty in the clinch, but I wanted him to strike more. I know that's a dangerous game. You can get caught yourself, but he was landing that left hook whenever he wanted, right? And that's what I wanted him to see. I know he kind of lost the striking battle in the second round, but come back out what you did in the first round, land those left hooks, stay calm, stay composed, cover up, and, and land a big shot because that's the number one thing in the scoring criteria is damage. And that's what they are scoring damage. And when you hug him against the cage and you fucking were pressing press him against the cage, Patty wasn't doing anything because Patty's foot was hurt. And he thought he was up 2 0, which I hate. I hate that he thought he was that comfortably up 2 0 that he took the third round off. That's why he said, I didn't get out of that position. I could have, whatever. That's not great. I don't love that because I don't know who his coaches are. I don't know if the self awareness is low on Patty, but anybody with eyeballs knows that's a close fight and could even score a 2 0 Gordon. I wouldn't fucking, I wouldn't yell at you if you had a 2 0 Gordon. So the third round was was razor close, but Patty was doing a little bit more as a fight as, as, as opposed to damage. Control time doesn't mean as much anymore unless you have him on the ground, and Jared didn't. Jared had him against the cage. Patty was throwing some knees, little short punches. That's more than what Jarrett was doing, who wasn't doing anything. Now, we're all going to have different opinions on this. I realize that. Just giving you my opinion. Could be wrong. I am not the best at scoring fights. That's hand up. Sean Sheehan was on the podcast with uh, with Anik today. That's a guy that lives and dies by scoring. That's his whole platform is he scores fights, and he knows what the criteria is, and he sticks up for a lot of judges, right? I can't remember who he scored it for. I think he maybe scored it for Patty, but he could. he's like, I can't. I can make an army 30-27 for Gordon. It's a very tough fight to score. Um, and obviously I'm a handicapper, so I'm going to be a little bit biased when I got money on the line with one guy and who I picked or whatever. So my opinion on scoring matters don't really mean shit, right? My opinion is this. I'm trying to be unbiased, but it's tough because I cast a ticket already. You know what I mean? I got money in my pocket because of it, but very close. Now for people to call this an absolute robbery, the worst decision in UFC history or MMA history, I think that's a little fucking dramatic. I understand Patty's this huge star. His post fight didn't help. He said it wasn't even close. I knew up it was up too. He went on to double down and said I dominated the fight. That's obviously not great for people who do not like do not like Patty and want Patty to win. Jared Gordon's a great guy, great story. Came out and showed out in a co main event spot here, biggest fight of his life against a guy um, with the hype train and in the popularity that he has. Now, uh, Matt Brown, Columbus's own. I gotta, I gotta come at you a little bit. You are so dead fucking wrong. I don't know if he said that's on his podcast or another podcast. He said that Patty is a media super media personality and that he's an amateur fighter. I think that is false. 
completely false. I think Patty is very good on the ground. I'm not claiming he's the next champion. I think Patty has real skills. He's fucking 20 and three, fought great competition over in Europe, was a double champ maybe, or at least a champ over in Europe. Did he get 45 and 55 pounds hours? Some correct me. That is that is a bullshit narrative that he pushed out there that this is an amateur fighter. I don't know if he's just trying to get clicks or whatever. He's talking about how Patty's trying to get clicks. You're calling a guy 20 and three an amateur. I mean, that that's just that's just not is he gonna be future world champion? I don't know. But that is that is that is bullshit. The, Conor McGregor got the same stuff back in the day. Oh, he's just all talk. He's not good. He's this and that. I saw some improvements with Patty, at least in his stand-up, right? What I didn't like was that the 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 fight IQ with him saying, Oh, I'm up two rounds. I can coast this round. I didn't like that. You need to get after it. You need to get a finish. And he could be saying this, you know, you know, whatever, to try to keep up this persona that he's kind of untouchable or whatever. I don't know. I didn't love it. Anyway, main event. Jan Blachowicz versus Magomed Nikolaev. Um, great fight. I, I, okay fight. Not great fight. Dana hated. I didn't hate it as much as Dana. I'm really impressed with Nikolaev because he got his wheels taken out. Both of them. Both. He got kicked up, and he switched up his game plan. First time in a five-round fight. Oh, and it was his first title fight. First title fight. Big main event. Big pay-per-view main event. Against a former champion. Got your legs taken out. Both of them. How to switch from Southpaw to Orthodox. And then you change it up by wrestling, which was a beautiful game plan. Showed a lot of heart. You were cut. You show me a lot of things. And I thought he edged it out 48-47. Or the draw, I thought, was a little much. I did not think that was a draw. I thought Magomed Van Kalaev won. Although, if I'm being honest, I think the outcome, it has a positive effect. Both these guys, I think, would lose from what I saw to Yuri. Um, maybe Glover. I mean, Jan's already got a loss to Glover. But get some fresh blood in there. Jamal Hill got promoted to the fight. He's fighting uh, Glover in, in January in Brazil. Jamal Hill has looked great, has knocked out, just coming off a big finish over uh, Tiago Santos. Action fighter. That's what Dana wants for these main events. And uh, good for Jamal Hill, right? Good for Jamal Hill. I think good for the SC as well. These guys can run it back because Yuri apparently is going to be out a little bit. I think you run this one back as a UFC fight night, maybe somewhere in Europe early next year. And then the uh, you know, and then we'll see what happens with Glover and, and Jamal. And if Yuri's back, run it with them, or if not, run it with the winner of this. There's a lot of options there, but I think Jamal Hill is, is, is a charismatic, talented dude who's going to go out in that Glover fight and have to prove some things. Because Glover obviously is going to try to take him down and fucking rip his head off. That's game plan one. And Jamal Hill has shown some weakness in the submission area. He says he come from jujitsu. Comes from jujitsu. Well, we're gonna have to find out. All right, so. Incredible, incredible stuff here. I will do a recap for this fight this weekend. Pickums will be out probably Wednesday or Thursday. I might record tomorrow, edit it, and put it. We'll see. Wednesday or Thursday. I don't want to make a deadline promise because I'm always fucking wrong. However, incredible year. This year changed my life. I know we got one more fight. I'm going to recap more, and I'll be a little bit more what I want to do, my goals for next year. But next year is going to be bigger and better because sports gaming is legal in Ohio next year. I don't have to travel to Indiana. My focus can be on that. I'm looking to go. I'm, I'm currently slightly under 60 percent, 59 point whatever percent. Trying to get better at that. We'll find out the final number. We got one more event. Uh, great event. I like this fight night coming up as well. There's a lot of good, you know, good fighters on them. And I'll cop one of my guys. So um, I'm I'm crazy excited for this weekend. Crazy excited for next year. Uh, things are changing. New logo. New um, new intro song. I'm gonna try to get a better camera, but more better better content. I've grown so much this year. Thanks. And for every single one of you watching or listening, it's because of you. And also, I mean, listen, it's because of fucking John Anik and Kenny Florian and Cody Merrow as well. Uh, joining that team and, and having my social media presence and, and this, these numbers grow two, three times, whatever it is, um, just is, is incredible to me. I mean, this is, this, is, this is awesome. And I love the back and forth. I love the repartee. I love, you know, I kind of had a little thing with Eric Hawani, which I'll address at another time, not with him personally, but what, what he said with Patty and I had had some really good back and forth with people online. And that's what I love. I'm not always right. I'm always, you know, I'm not always wrong. But I love a civilized conversation. No personal attacks. And that's the best thing. You know, that's what, I don't need people to agree with me. I want a nice conversation. I want a nice disagreement. That's what makes us human. You don't need to agree all the time. But if you do it respectfully, instead of going, you're a fat fuck who's got a wrong opinion. You're coming at me wrong, right? Come at me like, whoa, BP. I don't know about that one. You know what I mean? Which most people did. And I got to tell you, I fucking love it. I love that stuff. I love that discord. People think I'm trying to make a brand off Patch and Hawani, which unfortunately, I, I I don't want that to be my brand. People are accusing me of that being my brand. 
I just disagree with some of the things he said. Now, I did say he responded very well to Patty. I agreed with a lot, not all of it, and I agreed with a lot of what Patty said, but not all of it. Really, there was one point I agreed with Patty. But I just want to thank you for all our Twitter followers who are coming at me, uh, having this debate, having this discussion, keep it civilized. If you come at me and go, I'm never watching Anik and Florian again because of this. Why? Because we disagree in one thing. We disagree that you love Errol Hawani and I don't love him as much as you or love him at all, really. I don't hate him. I don't strongly dislike him, right? But that's why you're done watching. That's why I'm I'm a piece of shit. That's why you hate me. It's because I disagree with you on this one thing. What if we have the favorite movie? What if we have the favorite song? That matter. You've already set stone. This guy sucks because he disagree. What are you doing? Let's have a conversation. Let's be human beings. Okay. That's a show. Pick them this week. Let's fucking go.